mirrors, glass, beads. Take them out, and instead you put sounds. A E I O. You put words in a kaleidoscope. Each time you turn, a different dream on each side of the bed. Our pillows were stuffed with so many feathers. I bet we flew in sleep. But I like it when we walked without an aim, just a random guessing game. Okay, from where do we see two moons? From over a puddle. Okay, when is the moon red? When I use up all the white to paint the snow. Have you packed the sweater, letter box full of letters that she could never fit in one word? So I cover the envelope with so many stamps. It begins to resemble the hopscotch grid we made when we were little. Don't know is busy arguing whether it's bumblebee or mumble because she never really understood what it had to say. Stay, stay. because in this galaxy of milky chances. Somehow our orbits overlap. Somehow we merged like two colors in a palette, resting on the head of a dancer. Grace. Graceless, we sprawled on sticky mud endlessly. Wait, what? Weight of everything that you can't carry with you. So I plonk my bum on the suitcase, the zip orbiting me like a planet, and falls out asleep, leaving me without a promise. She was too afraid to promise. Instead, teasingly she says, "One always leaves, 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 follow the wind, mesmerized by a song only." Stop. Like what? Remember how you used to argue with me for hours because you thought stars were made out of wax, just because they seemed to melt when actually your eyes went moist staring at them. Says the girl who thought that hiccups happen somewhere outside of her, and I would look for them for hours. Hours were stories. I bet you would think we're just making them up. Who would believe that we chased peacocks after midnight? And the next morning, I'd look for a feather, not knowing whether she needed a bookmark or not. If you hadn't tricked me into losing my page number. Simply because you had to talk to me about. I don't understand. Why you have to leave? Thank you. The next poem that I'm going to do is about how I've always changed houses, and no matter which house I stayed in, I always remember waking up to the same Hindustani classical music that my father plays every morning. So this poem is just about that. It's about changing houses. My family is like a bunch of packers and movers. There is always a room in every house full of cardboard and bubble wrap. Some boxes never emptied because in no time you'll have to fill them up again. Old toys, Lego pieces, tired of being built into a new house each time, confused, not knowing exactly which door is the main door anymore, and now just waiting, waiting to be built into a new one. Car tracks forming that Hot Wheels oblong, not used for racing anymore, but. Flirting with the boundaries between time and space, forming that same Hot Wheels oblong, no matter where. Wooden dolls and puppets, some without an arm, others just an eye, some with strings left in the corner of an old house. I bet someone's found them now. Old books, back since when I was a kid. M A N man, P A N pan, D A N tan, C A N. Can my new address not rhyme with my old one? I wonder sometimes. There are gaps in my father's postcard album. Possibly because of so many postcards being sent to the wrong doorstep. A different door, but the same furniture. A chair broken one New Year's Eve. A dressing table mirror cracked exactly at that point where my eyes meet my nose. The crack is still there; it's just not so funny anymore. And then there are posters rolled up with bits of double-sided tape carrying bits of wall plaster that I dare not remove. And then there is this box full of cassettes. Cassettes that I don't pack because I'm too scared they'll curl up in the bubble wrap, and so instead I stack them, like paint brushes in a jar, waiting to be picked out to paint on silence. I play these most on rainy days, when I can curl into the space between the two notes, and if it doesn't stop raining, I just walk around the house. I walk around the house, bumping into walls that I'm yet to know exist, and switches. Oh, switches! I'm still working on. Balancing them exactly between the off and the on, and the off and the on, and the off and the on is what I call space and silence. And sometimes I'm just silent. Every congratulations on a new house spells congratulations on a truck full of new secret corners, new broken doorknobs, new favorite dolls, wrapped in cardboard and bubble wrap. Where this morning I found another box. Old letters, it said. Letters from a teenage me to the younger you. I know your pin code by heart now, and mine. I just make mine up these days. Thank you. My bed is 89 years old. 
which makes it the oldest member in my family of 12 with grandma being 83 and zimba being 3 and my tortoises seem to never noticeably grow in winters they can be used as paperweights and i know my mother has a terrible desire to put candles on them for diwali to have what she calls slow disco lights to add to the variety our cook porish kaka let in a pigeon the other day to make a nest right on top of the tv cabinet so every time increase the volume of the tv we are scared of eggs exploding and then there's porish kaka's wife kolanika ki and my dad's elder brother jet how the former can't hear and the latter hates not being heard so all day they bicker and bicker and bicker and bicker and bicker 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 words sometimes aren't meant for a conversation but to fill gaps in a room with furniture kept minimum so that jetha's walker doesn't collide into anything his walker is the second loudest thing after the 89 year old bed the tuck 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 zimmer move tuck tuck is a constant background tone to the evening game of scrabble that my parents play they sometimes spell more words than they say to each other words sometimes aren't meant for a conversation but to form habits that two people grow together as they grow separately my father is most excited on sunday lunches when bengali culture triumphs over gujarati culture the latter belonging to my mother my grandmother and half of me which makes for an extremely challenging situation for porish kaka's dinner plans because every meal would mean compliments in one language and abuses in the other i grew up listening to almost as many fights as ella fitzgerald songs which taught me that it's important to assert oneself beat against the imposition of healthy food or a political opinion that need not match with mine so most nights i fight to the very end all debates take place around the ancestral box of beetle leaf or pane dibe as we like to call it out of which my father prepares pan for all interested members most nights we just sit in silence staring at blank walls with paw marks trying to forget the day that just went by thinking of something significant to say but too lazy to put it into words words sometimes aren't meant for a conversation but to form gaps like holes indicating the age of a tattered muffler that my grandma makes with a smile so lost i think she makes it for a black and white photograph she sleeps with me on nights when i sleep with her we grew from inseparable molds of clay or damp with stories from sleepless nights into something more formed like two bodies so aware of its edges some nights i miss her tirelessly patting hands and her fairy tales with an unexpected feminist twist in the end sleeping on the bed the 89 year old bed dreaming of being a swing one day as it keeps reducing its grip on the ground every day sleeping was like harmonizing with each turn waking up a bed post moving slightly to wake up the rest with the wind chimes that my mother hung by the bed post last year her solution to the rickety rackety bed was not to make it creak less somehow but to turn the creak into something melodious solutions in my house are never solutions to problems but mechanisms invented to the story of their own like the basket we hung by the staircase where grandma from climbing up and down and up and down and up and down was soon decorated with mirrors and bangles and drawing so many it became too heavy to work some solutions forget their problems some words forget their meanings and some conversations have absolutely no purpose in a house like ours where family photographs have endangered species being sniffed by a curious dog who's forced to pose by a bunch of humans who talk simultaneously in four languages thank you i was 6 and i grew up with govinda's bollywood moves dancing bare chested in the snow slow melodies and faded sunlight for being blue I was six, and I thought love meant a boy and a girl, entwined fingers for only two. I was six, and I believed falling meant once, only once I'd fall in love with you. You see, I was six, and hell bent certain growing up was to know that love was always only for two. I'm not six anymore. I think I fell in love the first time in the ninth grade October with a boy who said he'd only touch me before he left and broke my first forever. Now when I've loved so much so many more grazing Octobers, Novembers and Decembers falling for moments hushed in whispers, fleeting eyes I forget to remember. I've fallen in love with boys who broke me and women whose curves and laughs were meant for these boys to touch and surrender. Today I'm not six, and perhaps the only thing I'm certain I learned growing up is that I don't know how to love myself anymore. Now I begin my assignments with unfinished poems that often forget to rhyme. When I was six, poetry always meant that rhyme would be followed by time. 
looking for hidden questions, all these answers I thought growing up we'd find in hardbound textbooks, conversations overheard, letters we never meant to send, answers I've lost myself searching for. So now I write poems for assignments I'll submit later than I meant to, telling you there's still everything I don't know. Thank you. the last poem for today, uh, I wrote this a while back, it's for my brother. <coughs> I made you a song. I found all these forgotten memories buried in childhood fading photographs, us in our torn underwears, catching tadpoles in the fish pond and the dirty puppies everywhere. Discovered? Increased letters, old emails about nameless lost loves, promises, dreams of growing up. Ten years down the line, you'd have a house on the beach, you'd ride your bike, I'd ride mine, we'd fly along the floating coastline. I opened this box of our shared secrets I had to hide away. I remembered all my tears you wiped for broken hearts. Boys whose faces I forget you had faithfully promised to punch each one. I said I didn't need taking care of. You remain my stubborn brother, proudly older by two months. So that the first time you fell sick, it didn't make sense. It was the storm before the smiles that would make the perfect dinner party stories. Precise blend of pain and hope, like a feel-good song. You'd fought cancer after all. Now look at you, chasing life by the horns. The first time round, our tears were fear, but I could see you winning. You ran five miles every day, barely out of the needles and the chemo, killing all your cells. You ran. You said you were lucky you had us. What about those who have none? So you ran your marathons, we thought your demons were done. The first time round, I had held your hand, fed you broken crumbs of chocolate. Then growing up, our grown-up worlds began to separate us. Akash, you were always the shooting star in my starry night. I was beginning to forget, almost losing you was like that wound which bled when you thought you were healing. The second time, it was a numbing pain. You were far away, I had to know you'd be saved. But even in your sunken eyes, your head barren, smooth and white. You had told me in a trance once that the morphine made you imagine. Even in your hallucinations, you burnt with that eternal life so that dying was never on the table. I put you in a little corner of my mind. It was just a little speed bump. After all, you had to be fine. I made plans for our next holidays, all our road trips across the world, all my boys, all your girls, all the stories we had to make. They decided not to tell me. You died May 12th. I had that exam May 14th. Amidst my Shakespeare studies as Faustus made his deal with the devil, you broke out of your box. Somehow I needed to know you were fine, but the phone rang for the fourth time. You sit there in your heartache, you sit there in your heartache, you sit there in your heartache. The song was on repeat every time I hear it now. Even in my sleep, I remember you dying. I have found all these memories. The first time we stayed up all night talking, you told me about the first girl who broke your heart and kissed you. We were at your first Indian wedding. You taught me that murder and video games is just so much fun and explained why Playboy would never be overdone. Caught in the chaos of our dysfunction, parents, homophobic aunts, raging uncles, all the crazy ones, you made them family. You were home. You were my winter sun. Today, I have opened your box. All the photographs, childhood puzzles, colored letters spill onto my lap, so I'll string them together loosely. Sometimes I drop the threads, but words are all I've got now, so I'll make you a song with our yesterdays, while you'll always be my favorite melody. Thank you. Mm -hmm.